and welcome to today's Nine Sigma Web on the Air Lake Central Molecules Grand Challenge, brought to you by Nine Sigma. My name is Jonathan Yakasha, and I will be your host and moderator for today's webinar. Please note that today's webinar is being recorded and will be transcribed for viewing on the Air Lake contest page on Nine Sites at a later date. To begin, I'll introduce our panelists today. From Air Liquide, Regis Rael, Senior Scientific Director, Francois Sabavier, H2 Scientific Leader, Material Science Global Lab Director, Denise Marie, O2, N2, and O3 Scientific Leader, and Pavel, CO2 Scientific Leader. And from Nine Sigma, we are joined by Raphael Passet, Senior Program Manager. Thank you all for joining us today. To begin, Regis will tell us about Air Liquide and give us an overview of this particular grand challenge. Regis? Thank you very much, Jonathan. So firstly, I would like to present you Air Liquide within a few words. So Air Liquide is a world leader in gases, technologies, and services for industry and health. And as you can see on the slide, Air Liquide is present in, in 80 countries with more than 50,000 employees. And we are very proud of serving more than 2 million customers and patients worldwide. Air Liquide revenue amounted to 15.4 billion last year, and its solutions that protect life and environment represented more than 40% of sales. Air Liquide's ambition is simply to be the leader of the gas industry. And innovation is clearly one of the pillars of the group's strategy. Our vision is that innovation should combine science, technology, and usages. And the challenge that we are presenting today fits perfectly with this vision. Next slide, Jonathan, please. So since 1902, Air Liquide has developed a unique portfolio of technologies to produce, purify, store, and distribute gases known as small molecules in the academic world. These small molecules, such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, nitrogen, are, in spite of their very simple structure, essential to sustain life, create and transform matter, or produce and store energy. These essential small molecules define our scientific and technological territory. Next slide. Next slide, please, Jonathan. OK. Remarkably, these small molecules play a key role in many of the challenges that our society has to face such as the energy and environmental transitions, urbanization, or scarcity of resources. We firmly believe that by combining a high-level scientific knowledge on these small molecules with the technological and operational excellence of air liquid, we can, together, develop solutions addressing these important societal challenges. This is the ambition of this first Air Liquide Essential Molecule Challenge, to create a synergy between Air Liquide and strategic partners based on long-term collaborations. Excellence will be the base of this collaboration. And I'm very happy to announce you that the two external members of the selection committee will be Professor Vivian Yam, from Hong Kong University. She's the youngest elected member of the Chinese Academy of Science. She's a foreign associate of the National Academy of Sciences in the US. And she obtains the L'Oreal UNESCO Award for Women in Science. And the second external member will be Jean-Marie Len, who obtained the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1987. So now let's detail the three topics of this essential small molecules challenge. Uh, Jonathan, next slide, please. Francoise. Yes, so Francoise Barbier is speaking. 
So hydrogen is a very important uh, molecule for air liquid. Uh, on Earth, uh, hydrogen is mainly found uh, associated with elements, so hydrogen must be produced. Today, we mainly produce uh, hydrogen from fossil fuels, for example, uh, methane reforming. So this uh, leads to the emissions of uh, CO2. So to, to contribute to the environment, environmental and energy transition, we need to develop new technologies that are clean in terms of CO2 emissions. So the challenge is really to develop uh, new technologies to produce uh, hydrogen by using water and solar energy, which will lead to the CO2 reduction emissions. In terms of uh, technologies so, and criteria, so water is a uh, the feedstock that we will consider in this uh, challenge, and uh, solar energy is the primary energy used to decompose the water. We also expect uh, to have technologies that will not uh, release CO2 to the atmosphere, and of course, we also expect processes that are safe and cost effective, and also uh, optimizable for high efficiency and also large production rates of hydrogen. There are different approaches, not only that they can include, for example, uh, photocatalytic water splitting, so biological water splitting, and also thermochemical uh, water splitting. Some uh, technologies are out of the scope, for example, the combination of a PV cell with uh, standard uh, electrolyzer. Um, systems or reactors where hydrogen and oxygen are mixed, and also processes uh, that use expansive or not abundant material. And of course, we also exclude processes that will use or will lead to toxic byproducts. Next slide. Very good. And before we proceed with the second topic, I'd like to invite any of our attendees, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A chat box at any time to submit your question. Uh, we would ask, because there are three separate projects, that if you have a project-specific question, please let us know which topic you're asking about when you submit your question. Obviously, for general questions about the project itself, you don't need to include that. Any questions that we don't get a chance to address during the Q&A session will be answered after the Q&A portion of today's webinar. Denise? Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for your participation today. I am very interested about the second topic, pocketable small molecule, which concerns the storage about our uh, core uh, territory, about our essential small molecule. Here, for example, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, acetylene, CO2, and noble gases. We are very interested to find some sponge material with a high, very high density storage, with two key pillars. The first one is safety, of course, but then it's innovative material because we want to find innovative material. So in terms of criteria, we have four different criteria, very important for us. Highest gravimetric and volumetric capacity, reversible take and release with low energy requirements, of course, we try to find a solution to store our, our gases at low pressure and temperature between 215.3 and 423. And it's very important in terms also about material. Uh, we try to find material based on non-toxic and abundant elements, as uh, Francois for the Francois topic. Um, what are out of the scope? Uh, today is uh, high pressure storage, for example, because it's our core business today. Also storage based on liquefaction and uh, storage with chemical reaction with formation of byproduct because we are very interested about environmental concern. It's our key uh, pillar also in terms of uh, priority of the group. So I am really happy if I have uh, some submission about this uh, topic. So next slide, please. And Pavel, could you tell us about CO2? Give us back your O2. 
Okay, Pavel Pranda speaking. Good evening for Asia, afternoon for Europe, and morning for U.S. As we all know, CO2 is a really visible molecule connected to metal, life, and energy. And we are really also aware of the impact of anthropogenic uh, carbon dioxide on our environment. So the objective of this challenge is to come up with some innovative, uh, out-of-the-box methods, ideas, processes, which would help us to split CO2 for, uh, to oxygen. And also, we will have carbon or carbon monoxide. So it means main focus is on oxygen from CO2 using any renewable energy. Criteria, um, again, we understand that it should be some catalytic process. So it means we are looking for a relatively cheap, abundant, recyclable uh, catalyst with um, a very limited impact on uh, CO2. So we are looking for uh, products with a high yield and purity. Uh, also, the, the efficiency of the overall conversion process should be as close as possible to theoretical minimum, thermodynamical uh, minimum. And uh, there is no requirement working with atmospheric CO2, so it means could be uh, any concentration of CO2 as a feedstock. What is really out of scope is really we are looking for sustainable and um, uh, green process, uh, which is um, uh, using a conversion pathway, again, which is not um, uh, using the catalyst, which can somehow impact the, uh, the CO2 footprint. And of course, the, the overall process should be neutral or negative in terms of CO2 footprint. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, and I will be more than happy to clarify any questions. Thank you. Very good, Pavel. Thank you very much for that introduction to that project topic. And now we'll turn to Raphael from Nine Sigma, who will talk a little bit more about the objectives and prize for this contest, as well as the contest timeline. Raphael? Good. So the um, opportunity for this challenge is, uh, is excellent. So there will be up to three winners. Uh, so the, the, the up to three best proposals will get the Air Leaky, the Scientific Award Prize, which is a cash prize of 50,000 euros each. And the award-winning proposals will have the, uh, the opportunity or can have the opportunity to negotiate with Elikide a, a joint research program and uh, a total budget of 1.5 million euros of cash plus in kind is reserved for the total of the, uh, of the uh, uh, re joint research uh, program. So this is an excellent uh, upside uh, which is there for the, the best proposals in this challenge. Next slide, yeah. So on the timeline, so the challenge opened the beginning of this year, and um, th the deadline for submissions is the 28th of April, 11 o'clock p.m. Central European time. Uh, I have to say that this is a hard deadline, so all the proposals have to be in there by that time. Uh, the advice I always give is to submit your proposal uh, as soon as possible. You can work on it, you can improve it, and uh, try to avoid being just at the, at the last moment in, in, in submitting your proposal. The announcement of the winners will be in September 2016. Next slide, okay. please. Okay, thank you, Raphael. Raphael, can you please tell us why should our solution providers, our attendees today, be interested in responding to this topic? Okay, uh, can you, yeah, so first of all, the most important thing is that this is um, a, a non-confidential challenge, which means that no confidential information is to be shared, and that has the implication that you will maintain your intellectual property. So by submitting a, a proposal or by winning the, the award, you do not give away a license to, to Elikide. So once you start discussing about a collaboration, a joint research program with Elikide, that's the moment when things like, uh, like licensing is, is discussed as part of the uh, collaboration program. Um, as stated before, the upside is also very good, three prices of 150k euros and uh, a total <clears throat> budget for 
um, joint research programs for of one half million euros, uh, consisting both cash as in kind for all the research programs together. Okay, very good. Thank you, Rafael. Before, before we proceed to the frequently asked questions, I would just like to reiterate to our attendees, this is an excellent, excellent opportunity for you to have questions about the project in general, uh, the three project topics in particular. Uh, ask your questions directly to the Air Liquide staff who are here to answer your questions and get additional details for you. Uh, so please avail yourself of that opportunity that you have right now. Uh, I would ask again that if you have project specific questions to let us know which topic in particular you're asking about so we can address it to the correct uh, individual. Proceeding to the frequently asked questions, Raphael, I'm not sure if my approach is within scope for this challenge. How can I get additional guidance? So this is an excellent uh, question. So there's several ways you can get guidance. So the first approach is that you send an email to the Nine Sigma help desk with uh, questions on, on, on guidance of your proposal. Uh, you can find the email address on the, uh, on the challenge uh, website. Uh, second approach is you can also call the help desk if that's what you prefer. There's a US number which you can use for that. And the, uh, the third approach is uh, to post a message in the forum. So there's a forum on the website of the challenge web website where you can post also a question to see if something falls in, is inside or outside the scope of the challenge. Thank you, Raphael. Uh, our next frequently asked question, and you touched on this briefly a little while ago, what is the deadline to submit a proposal for this challenge? So the deadline is 28th of April, uh, 11 o'clock in the evening, Central European time. Um, advice is not to submit last minute. And again, if you have issues with submitting the proposal, you can always reach out to the help desk to seek help to, uh, to sort out the issues of, uh, that, that you may have in submitting the proposal. Okay. And this one uh, particular to this particular project, uh, if I'm one of the winners, do I have to spend the 50,000 euros on technology development? Well, not necessarily. Of course, it uh, um, it, uh, it makes you um, more credible if you use the, uh, the the money, the award, to further develop your uh, your um, technology. But it's, it's not mandatory. You can use it for whatever you want. Okay. Thank you very much for that. We will now proceed with the question and answer session. These questions are coming in from our attendees today. We've got a very good number of questions already waiting to be answered by either Raphael or the Air Liquide staff. Uh, I would like once again to reiterate that this is an excellent opportunity for you to ask your questions directly to the Air Liquide staff and get a prompt answer right here while we're on the line with them. With that, I will turn the questions over to Raphael. And Raphael? Yeah. Whenever. Uh The, uh, the first two questions on the uh, submission. So the first question is, how long should the proposal be in terms of word and page number? And the second one related to that, is there a specific template for submission? So the answer is there is a template. So if you click on the submit uh, button, then you will see the, um, the uh, an online form that you can use to fill in your, uh, your uh, proposal. Um, there is, um, in terms of the length of the proposal, uh, there is a maximum size in uh, megabytes. I don't know the number at, at this moment out of my head. For uh, ten megabytes. For ten. ten megabytes. Yeah. Um, the advice is to be um, um, precise in, in providing the necessary information in a concise way to make it uh, easier for the evaluators to evaluate your proposal and avoid scanning very long pieces of text where somewhere the answer is hidden in, in the middle. So I hope that that answers the, the questions. Let me look at, look at the next question. Okay, the next question, number, th number four. Yeah, the next question is, um, with regards to 
hydrogen recovery from water, would there be, would there be interest in Air Liquide to look at technology that don't have a proof of concept ready? So uh, this question uh, deals with uh, topic uh, one. Uh, of course, we have um, that is proposed. We, we will take uh, this type of uh, proposal for evaluation. Uh, I would say that this is also true for the two other questions. Uh, really, we are ready to be surprised to very disruptive project proposals, and uh, we can accept really proposals which have a very low tier level. <laughs> So, a uh, uh, question for topic number two. In challenge two, when saying low pressure, do you uh, do you have some specific limits in mind? Not really. Uh, we don't want a very high pressure, but uh, for example, until uh, 50 bars, uh, it's uh, it's a good in terms of uh, of pressure. So, I don't. I we don't want, uh, for example, uh, 700 bars, but uh, until 50. Above, it's correct, or less, of course. So the next question is, what is the privacy of the proposal, and between bracket, could it include non-published results? So I can be uh, uh, provide an answer to that question. So the um, the, all the information that you provide should be non-confidential. Uh, having said that, we are not going to publish the proposal somewhere on the web. So they will only be shared inside Air Liquide, but um, it should be not confidential information. The next question is for the solar cell splitting opportunity. If very small quantities of rare Earth material, uh, rare earth elements are used and recycled, will that be out of scope? No, the, the, we can take this, uh, this proposal. If, if we find the, the wording uh, low, very low quantities and uh, recycling. So which was uh, yeah. It's, it's an award. So we can you can answer to this question. Yes. So it's an award, it's individual. It's a yeah. So our next question is a generic question. Is the fifty thousand euro award for the proposing individuals or for the organization? Can you answer that question, uh, Regis? Yes, really, uh, it's a scientific award, uh, clearly, so it's uh, an individual recognition. So, as Raphael says, you can do what you want uh, with this money, but we consider that this is a personal award. So I'm just looking now to the list of questions. And just a moment. Yeah, one minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, for one of the questions, we have a question about the pressure and the temperature concerning the storage in pocketable small molecule. Uh, the pressure and the temperature is really for the st gas storage and not for the synthesis of the material. Huh? So if you need to have a high temperature for the synthesis of the material, this is completely uh, well accepted. Huh? The conditions are for the storage of gases and not for the synthesis of material. I don't understand the question. 
<clears throat> so the next uh, question is uh, the following. Is uh, CO2 electrolysis with SOA considered? Exactly. So just in simple terms, any process uh, which is splitting CO2 and we are yielding oxygen will be considered as a first priority. Any other processes like artificial photosynthesis, CO2 uh, electrocatalysis are also considered. So it means uh, the main focus will be on uh, direct CO2 splitting, but also other approaches like uh, photosynthesis uh, type will be also considered. Okay, you can. Yeah. So it's on the pocketable small molecules. The question is: Is that it's stated no. as pol is, I think it's a general. Question. It's a general question. So if, if a multi-step process is acceptable, uh, is in, yeah, it's not clear for which topic it is. So which topic is it? Is our multi-step process is acceptable for? Okay, if it's for pocketable small molecule, if it's for the multi-step multi uh, process to produce the material without any problem. Huh? Uh, so it depends on uh, which uh, kind of uh, question at the end you have in mind. If it is for the topic one, so hydrogen production, depending on the technology, uh, we can have a multi-step process, but of course if the efficiency is still uh, uh, high. Okay, so let's uh, let's see this one, yeah, that one. So for all projects, can we assume that solar heat may be used to generate process steam, and solar energy may be used to generate electricity to drive our invention? Solar uh, heat can be used for, um, I would say, thermal processes, but. Um, we do not accept proposal that will use uh, electricity directly produced from solar energy, for example, uh, PV cell, for example, because we exclude from the proposal um, the combination of uh, PV cell with uh, an electrolyzer feed by uh, solar electricity. Okay, next question. Are there any particular technology level requirements? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the answer, Pavel. Yeah, we know. Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> we are ready to, to, as I already said, and we are really ready to have a proposal with no proof of concept. So, of course, uh, a proposal is a proof of concept can be seen as more solid, but nevertheless, we are really, really to accept, uh, I will say, very disruptive ideas, very disruptive approaches, starting only from, uh, uh, I would say, a review on literature or very innovative ideas. So for topic number one, the hydrogen generation, are you looking for a complete system for solar generation, or would a proposal focusing on the development of a new photocatalyst be appropriate? We, we focus on, uh, we prefer focus on the development of a complete system. Uh, the development only of a new catalyst is not uh, the, the, the preferred approach. Wait a 
So for another one for the hydrogen challenge, one of our researchers asked if Air Liquide would consider a proposal from a consortium instead of a proposal from a single organization, even if the proposal was handled by a coordinated organi organization. Um, so I think that we can consider proposal from consortium for all the three topics. The only point is that we will be engaged then uh, within a long-term collaboration, and it's clear that we we should be able to discuss all together the IP and the technical development. So sometimes we have the experience that with a consortium it's a little bit more difficult to have this type of discussion, but we will not exclude proposals uh, coming from a consortium. Next question is the following. So, do you also consider other projects of uh, CO2 reductions, such as, such as uh, methane, methanol, formic acid. and formic acid? Okay, so um, um, again, in, in simple terms, we are looking for oxygen. And, and of course, during that process, there could be byproducts, could be CO, could be uh, methanol, methane any uh, type of molecule which can be used as a fuel, carbon-based uh, carbon fuel. Yes, we will also look on those proposals, but again, the, the main focus is on oxygen. Okay, another one for topic two. Would you be interested on proposals where there is a proof of concept of gas storage, as well as the synthesis method, but the specific molecule composition is not identified yet. Okay. That's not an easy question. <laughs> uh, basically, I will say yes, but we have to be sure that the material will not contain toxic atoms, or clearly, or very rare components. Huh? Because as Denise explained, really, we are looking for materials which can be used on a large scale, so toxicity is a problem, and availability of the starting material also is an issue for us. So, why not? But we have to be sure that we have no toxic or rare materials, uh, or rare atoms within this material. So, it was clearly stated that there is no IP license granted to Air Liquide. Why is that not clearly stated in the, in the waivers? Um, there is indeed no uh, license granted during the contest. Uh, it's a non-confidential contest. And uh, there is a question on this in the, uh, in the forum at this moment, which will be uh, answered in, um, in, um, in, uh, in, in, in very soon. So, why, why about the, this waivers in the uh, terms and conditions? So, this answer will be posted on the question, on the forum. So, another proposal: Does the proposal need to be submitted uh, through an institution? That's not the case. If you have, uh, if you're an inventor and you have an, uh, a very good, a very good idea, you can uh, you can pr propose it. So the next one is on. Let me see. Do you want? To? Yeah. So the the other this is again for. Uh, yeah, for Pavel, so on topic three, the question is, do you want oxygen or carbon? <laughs> Again, uh, just to be really clear, uh, the main focus is on oxygen, and definitely carbon is a, is a byproduct. But there is no preference if it's CO, if it's carbon, or if it's other carbon-bearing molecule, but definitely the focus is on oxygen.
So if, if the idea comes from one person, is it possible to present the proposal of the challenge with two names? Yes, of course, but then you will have to share the award if you are the laureate of the, <laughs> of, of the challenge. Clearly. Huh? Yeah. There's money. Uh, regarding the topic on pocketable molecules, are you only interested in the materials for storage or also in the storage process itself? We would like to say the both, of course. So we want the, a good material with a good process. But of course, if your R&D, your research is focused on material, please do not hesitate um, because uh, we are very interested about material, but uh, both. The next question is, does the joint research program include technology demonstration? So it will depend. If we start with a project at a very low tier level, let's say one, I think then within three and four years, the target will be to reach tier level between four to five, okay? So here it will be really to transform uh, the idea into a technology, of course. If we start with a proposal which has already a tier level between three and four, then the collaboration with the early kit can be really to develop a pilot. So it will depend on the tier level of the proposal. But once again, we are ready to receive all kinds of proposals. So the question... So on the uh, collaboration with Elikide, on the, uh, the uh, joint uh, collaboration with the 1.5 million euro <coughs> budget, will that include salary of postdoc and PhD students or only equipment and consumables? Okay, so with the winners of the challenge, we want to establish a long-term collaboration and then we will enter, I would say, in a classic collaboration. Uh, within early kid, we have more than 100 collaborations worldwide, so it means in all geographies currently. So we are very used to establish collaboration with academic partners, with startups, or even with private R&D. So in fact, we'll have the laureate and we'll enter within a classic collaboration. So uh, the 1.5 uh, uh, million euros can be used for salaries to finance postdoc or to finance uh, experimental setup as well. So another question for uh, the second topic. Is the gas to be stored considered to be available in a specific form? No, uh, we want to store our molecule, but it can be stored in a solid or into a liquid. So it's, uh, it's really an open uh, uh, kind of, uh, uh, of a storage. So don't hesitate uh, to candidate if you have a solid storage or liquid storage. Another uh, question on the CO2 electrochemical reduction. Are mm -hmm. photoelectrochemical cells for CO2 considered? Yes. Question on topic three. Uh, can the power from other renewable energy sources other than photovoltaic like a wind or wave or renewable can it can it can it come from 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 there yes uh, definitely because we are looking for sustainable process so uh, we are looking for something which is very low uh, co2 footprint so it means um, all that energy input which we understand it's it's needed should come from renewable energy all kinds of renewable energy yes Question. Yes, take it. So another one for topic three. Do we need to specify the source of electricity if we are proposing new electrocatalysts? Uh, yeah, it could be a simplified process because you just uh, say that you need electricity and that uh, yeah, that electricity comes from wind, solar, whatever. Yeah, definitely will be considered, yes. So now a general question for topic one, two, and three. 
is a techno-economic study required for the proposals? And the answer is very clear, no. No, we want scientific proposals, huh, clearly. So really, we don't expect to have really a techno-economic study for the proposed solution. And um, is, what is the recommended size of the research team? Okay, uh, it's very difficult to answer. I think it can be two, three, four, five uh, people, I think. And so it's, I would say, class size for the research team. Okay, uh, question for topic one and number three. Are there particular limitations in terms of process, process temperature levels? Uh, for topic uh, one, for thermal process, uh, we, we expect temperature less than 700 degrees Celsius. And for topic number three, Again, we are looking for really efficient process, so it means lower temperature better, but uh, there is no uh, specific limit, temperature limit. But uh, again, for topic uh, one, the temperature is coming from the solar heat. Another question on the CO2. To, uh, O2 topic. Any information on the skill of the application? What I'm not so sure if I understand question uh, on the skill. On the scale, the size. Scale oh, sorry, of the skill. Okay, scale. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Because again, as uh, Regis mentioned, you know, so we are not looking for specific uh, technology readiness level. So it means could be. Uh, some some idea could be small prototype, no uh, limitation on the scale. A uh, general question. Uh, is a particular weighting used to determine which criteria are most important in evaluating proposed solutions? Okay, so as I mentioned in the selection committee, we have two high-level external scientists, and Professor Jean-Marie Lenn and Professor Vivian Yam, and we will have also uh, what we call fellows, which are high-level uh, researchers within Air Liquide. So in fact, it will be a combination of science and technology because as I said, we see innovation as a combination of science and technology. And usage, of course, is given by the fact that we are addressing societal challenge. So it will be a balance between these two criteria and we cannot say that one will be more important than another uh, because we want to, to have disruptive ideas, but on the other hand, we want also proposals which have the potential to be developed on an industrial scale. At this time, I'd like to remind all of our attendees that we are approaching the end of our webinar time very quickly here. If you have any questions that you'd like to pose to the Air Liquide team or to the Nine Sigma team, please avail yourself of this opportunity at this time. Uh, we're still taking questions via the Q&A chat box. There are a, a great number of questions coming in, some great questions. So I know that we won't be able to get through all of them today, but they will be answered and, and posted as part of the transcript for today's webinar. Uh, Raphael, do you have the next question available? Yes, another question. So may I ask you which kind of packaging you are interested in for the materials? For the packetable molecule, we are interested in about all this kind of uh, packing. So do not hesitate uh, to send some proposal for cylinder, for bulk, for can, for uh, 
uh, a lot of different um, uh, kind of uh, of bag, of course. Uh, so do not hesitate to send any proposal. We are uh, uh, looking some key proposal for with two pillars: safety first, and then mobility. So it's for all the kind of packaging. Uh, the limit is your imagination for us. So question topic number three, do you have a preference for oxygen and carbon monoxide as products? Uh, again, as I said, really the main focus is on oxygen and again those byproducts, if it's uh, CO, carbon monoxide, if it's carbon, if it's uh, fuel type of uh, compound, it's, it's, it's the same. So it means really number one is oxygen. So another uh, question is, um, is the challenge uh, open for everybody? The, the answer is uh, yes, but not for LEQD employees. So this is not the challenge for LEQD employees. So I think we have uh, covered uh, most of the of the questions. There's a, a few questions. Uh, so the questions that we were not able to answer, we will address them on the uh, on the uh, forum. Uh, so all the all the as Jonathan said, there will be a transcript, and all the questions that were not answered will be answered in the uh, in the forum. All right, great. Thank you very much, Raphael, and thank you to all of our attendees for submitting all of those wonderful questions. Uh, I know that we didn't get a chance to answer all of the questions in today's webinar. Raphael just stated all of the questions that were submitted will be answered, that those question and answers will be included as part of the transcript. Uh, and I strongly recommend subscribing to the form stated when those questions and answers are posted. So what can you do today? First and foremost, you can visit the website that's listed there. That is the project page. You'll be able to read the individual topic descriptions. And from that page, you'll also be able to access the response form for these topics. What else can you do? You can subscribe to the challenge form. As I said, that's a great way to keep it up to date on how the project is progressing. You'll be able to see when the video is posted. You'll be able to see when the transcript and the Q&A session is posted. Additionally, if there are any questions that you wanted to ask to Air Liquide or to Raphael, that would be a great way to go about getting an answer. Additionally, you can contact the Nine Sigma Provider Help Desk. Uh, they're a great resource and they can get you the answers that you're looking for. Would also like to keep in mind that the deadline for submissions is April 28, 2016 at 11 p.m. Central European Time and that's 5 p.m in the Eastern, Eastern US time. And as Raphael said earlier in today's webinar, that is a hard deadline. Once, it, once the clock turns to five o'clock Eastern US time, the response button will go away and you won't be able to respond to this project. So uh, as Raphael suggested, please, please, please get your submissions in well before that deadline time. So I will thank all of our panelists for joining us today from Air Lakeed from Nine Sigma. Thank you to all of our attendees for joining us. And please note once again that today's webinar has been recorded and will be posted online at a later date. Thank you very much once again.